no matter how strong you are, according to physics, you'll never be able to slow and controlled float into a handstand unless you do this. You need to have the total weight times distance on this side of your hands equal to the total weight times distance on that side of your hands and only then you can redistribute the weight into a handstand. But what does total weight times distance even mean? Let's look at this really cool video game I played as a kid to illustrate it in a simple example. Here we have to balance the scale. And of course 10 pounds is bigger than 6 pounds so the scale will tip that way. But as we bring the weight closer to the fulcrum, at some point 10 times 2 is actually less than 6 times 5. So even though 10 pounds is bigger than 6 pounds, it cannot tip the scale. And if you put it at the right distance, 10 times 3 is equal to 6 times 5. So even though 10 pounds is heavier than 6, you can actually balance the scale. This is exactly why you will notice that even though the total weight of your legs is the same, it will feel like a tuck press with the legs bent and close to your hands is going to feel far easier than a straight leg pike press where the legs have to go further away from your hands as you're making this journey. That's because the same weight is now assigned to a longer distance away from your fulcrum. But does that mean that a tuck press will also be easier than a straddle press? Well, not necessarily. It depends. When you do a straddle, if you have the flexibility to go so wide that the distance ends up being less than in a tuck, then the straddle will be far easier than a tuck press. But if your hips are stiff and you don't have that flexibility, then a tuck press for you will be easier than a straddle press. This is the case for me as well. However, there are things you can do regardless of the leg shape that will make things easier. For example, the more you can compress your hips, the more narrow the distance you have to press into a handstand. And also, the more you can straighten the knees and the ankles, the more you are spilling weight forward this way so that you don't have to lean as much to get up. If you have straighter knees, straighter angles, you will lean less to get up into the press. But when it comes to the main driving force of the press, it gets a little bit more complicated. In the handstand module, we saw that you could press off the wall by leading mostly with the leg or mostly with the hip or mostly with the shoulder or more realistically using a combination. The same thing applies to pressing off of the ground. You can technically in one extreme situation lead almost entirely with the leg like this very flexible person I found on TikTok or in another extreme lead almost entirely with the shoulder like one of my amazing coaches Rabah who does not even need to use a hip compression to press back and forth into a handstand and down. However, we don't want to focus too much on extremes. So unless you're insanely strong or insanely flexible, you'll want to check out these three more balanced approaches that you can also combine. Quick interruption, I promise. I just want to say that if you're enjoying this video, please know this is taken from a much bigger handstand press course in the skill-based fitness community where we have many more courses to master handstands, backbends, L-sits, front levers, and many more skills. And we have a interactive forum where I will see what you're doing and answer your questions, as well as two times a week Zoom calls where I can see you live and give you feedback. If you enjoyed this, consider checking this out. It's much uh, less expensive than you might imagine. And now back to the video. And the first approach is what I like to call the calisthenics approach. In this one, we're going to take advantage of leading more with the shoulders. You'll notice you don't need as much hip compression for this one. The back is flat and you'll notice you can see my entire head during the movement. So I'm leading with the shoulders and the hips, but more so the shoulders. Once my toes lift, I flex my shoulders and I get up into the headstand. The second approach is called the circus method. And this one is based more on leading with the hips. So instead of breaking with the shoulders and then pushing up, you are encouraged to have the shoulders as straight as possible from the start, round the back to get the hips over the hands, and then unround from there. 
Now this requires a bit more hip compression and a lot more hamstring flexibility. But if you have those, you will in theory need to lean far less than the calisthenics approach. So I'll show you how it looks like on my body and then I'll show you how it looks like if I was more stiffer and then I'll show you how it looks like on a more flexible person like my friend Alex who's an awesome flexibility coach. So I'll show you a video of her doing it. So if I try as much as possible to compress my hips and take advantage of my hamstring flexibility, my shoulders are as straight as possible. You cannot see my head, it's covered. I go on tiptoes and I get up into the headstand. This requires a lot more effort for me to coordinate, although strength-wise, it does feel much easier on the shoulder. Now, if I wasn't as warmed up in my hamstrings, which I'm not very flexible, but say I was even more stiff, then I would have to lean far more. So even if you're here, for example, and you're here, it is possible, but you have to lean so much more to lift that at this point, it becomes easier for you to combine it a little bit and break the circus rules by breaking the shoulders a bit and coming back up. So here's like a combination. I'm here, I break the shoulders a bit and I come back up. This also applies if you happen to have shorter legs and you feel like even doing that, you lean as much as possible and it's still not working. Then you break the shoulders a little bit and come back up. Now this is how this press looks like on my friend Alex and you will see that she is having to lean far less in order to achieve it. And for reference, this is how a forearm press looks on her where she doesn't have to uh, bend the shoulders at all. She just gets her uh, hips on top of the base of support and floats up. The third approach I like to call the b-boy approach or break dancers approach or breakers approach or b-girl approach. Uh, because I first saw it in an old breakdancing video and is when you want to take advantage of the shoulder strength like the calisthenics approach but you don't have the wrist flexibility. Notice this, as I lean more and more and more forward I'm taking advantage of wrist flexibility but if I bend my elbows, not anymore. It's more shoulder strength but it's, for some people it's worth it because you don't feel the tension in the wrist. Now, I know some people that report that this is less strength for them, uh, but it does feel more strength for me as someone who does both. And I've put a muscle sensor. It is heavier, uh, but it is more comfortable. So you pick and choose which one works best for you. So to do this, you're really trying to do the calisthenics approach. And when you cannot lean anymore, you continue to lean by bending the elbows. And then from there, you can unpack the legs and then push with the arms or you can push with the arms and then unpack with the legs, or you can do both at the same time, up to you. Now, a lot of people like to argue about what is the best approach. And of course, by watching this video, I think you can tell there is no best approach. Ideally, you wanna learn all of them. You wanna start with whichever is easier for you and then move towards whichever you enjoy more artistically. And in my experience, a lot of people follow the grass is always greener on the other side kind of mentality. If it's easier for them to do a bent arm uh, b-boy press, they'll be like, oh, I really want to do straight arm. And if it's easier for them to do a, a calisthenics way, they're like, oh, I really want to learn circus. And if it's easier for them to do circus, then, oh, I really want to learn. So just start with which one is better for you. Know that other people would love to do what you're trying to do. And then once it's very comfortable, work on the others as needed.